So tonight we've got uh, six speakers, um, and on behalf of SHP, I'd like to welcome them and thank them for coming and speaking to us. Um, so we've got two intern pharmacists and one uh, recently, uh, I guess, registered, registered pharmacist. <laughs> um, and we've also got two directors of pharmacy, and then also another pharmacist is going to talk a bit about SHPA. But the others are basically going to talk about how the whole application process worked for them and their perspective, and um, give you some more advice um, on the whole process. So we'll kick off with. Um, Erin, who is a intern at the Prince of Wales Hospital. Okay. Hello everyone. Um, as, as I've just been introduced, I'm an intern at Prince of Wales Hospital. Um, that said, I'm not the smartest person you've ever met. Um, and I'm certainly, you know, while I did alright at uni, I'm certainly not the most academic. So don't rule it out for that reason, is pretty much the first thing I would say. Okay, so if we start off, general tips for interviews. Um, first thing, my first thing would be know a bit or about the hospital that you're applying for. Get a bit of an idea of what they specialise in, so if they do renal or, or heart transplants or something, just so you know a little bit about how they work. Um, Secondly, don't just apply for the hospital you want. A uh, couple of reasons for this. Firstly, you might not get it. You know, average of numbers says that you may not. Secondly, uh, the more interviews you do, the better you get at it. Um, so by the time you get to the one that you actually want, you've had a bit more practice and you're a bit more relaxed about the process. Um, Peter could uh, attest to that. I was terrible in my first year, and I still got a job. <laughs> The third thing that most people have actually said to me is have a question or two that you want to ask at the end. Um, you're always given the opportunity to ask and it, it looks really good if you actually have a question or two that you want to know, particularly either about your position or about the hospital or something like that. It just makes it look like you're really interested. Uh, if you don't know the answer, it's better to say you don't know the answer. So <laughs> don't try and bluff it if you don't. Um, if, if it comes down to them asking about a situation, you can say, I'm not familiar with how it works in hospital, but this is what I would do. So basically, it's just trying to work around the fact that you don't know everything, and they don't expect you to know everything, but they expect you to be able to work out what you would do in a particular situation. Um, as for what I put in my letter, tailor the letter to the hospital. I was actually told by somebody that at principles, they had a letter that said, I would like to work at RPA because. So do a new letter for every hospital. <laughs> um, include any relevant uh, career and university details. So if you've done honours or if you've been part of super or anything like that, uh, add that in. If you do anything out of the ordinary at work, so if you organise all the Websters, put it in. Um, those kind of things just make, make you look, look like a well-rounded person. Put in why you want to work in hospital. This can be a bit of a tricky one. Don't get too cliche about it. Um, but by the same token, people need to see that you're actually really interested in hospital and you're not doing it just because. Um, if possible, tailor the letter to some of the selection criteria. So as I said, some hospitals will do different things. It's really good if you can sort of tailor your own experience or your future learning to what that hospital does. Answer the selection criteria. Cannot say it enough. Uh, apparently, it happens a lot that people just don't know how to answer the selection criteria. Um, the other thing is that most of the applications ask for you to demonstrate how you do a particular thing, so you've got to work it back to something you actually do in real life. So whether it's that you know, demonstrated good knowledge of pharmacology, say I got this mark in pharmacology and I did this in farm crack, and whatever it happens to be, actually prove what you're trying to say. Uh, the last little hint would be a keep, keep a copy of your answers to the selection criteria. A lot of hospitals will have similar kind of things and you can either recycle or slightly rework your answers for each hospital. So it saves you a lot of work and it also means that by the time you get to those last couple of applications, you've kind of ironed it a bit more as well. 
What did I get asked in the interview? This is really tricky because every interview is completely different. Um, probably some of the main things were why did I want to work in hospital general and why did I want to work in that particular hospital. Uh, I was asked a lot what makes a good pharmacist and what makes a good intern, so maybe think about some of those things. In this particular case, um, with, with that question, a lot of it comes down to rehashing the selection criteria. So if you remember what the selection criteria were, you're halfway there. Um, a lot of, basically all of them had a hypothetical situation. Um, so it was either working out how to prioritise a workflow or how to deal with a, a clinical situation where you needed to talk to doctors and that type of thing. Uh, it, this is the situation where I would say if you're not really sure of how the system works, um, you, you either basically justify your answers well, even if they're incorrect, because you've justified them, shows that you've been thinking about it. Um, and if it comes down to a situation where you wouldn't know how to handle it, you say, I would see my preceptor or a senior pharmacist and ask their advice. Good way to get out of it if you don't know. Um, a lot of pharmacies ask for counselling, so counselling on a product. Um, a couple of people I were told were asked to demonstrate an accuhaler. Um, I know Westmead makes you measure out a dose, so um, be familiar with a couple of things that, that you might see. Uh, and then most of them had a general case or a hospital chart. So if you haven't seen a hospital chart, maybe have a look at one of those just so you know where everything is on it. Uh, and again, when it comes down to the chart, if you get a drug that you don't know, say I'm not familiar with it, but I would look here and I would look at renal function, I would look at allergies, whatever it is, just so that they know that even if you don't know everything, you know how you would go about it. These are all the mistakes I can make, I should name. Um, so some common drugs you might encounter just to keep an eye out for. Uh, it's not uncommon to see methotrexate daily as opposed to weekly on a chart. Know that tazacin and tamentin are penicillins because penicillin allergy comes up a lot. Um, you may or may not be asked about amiodarone, digoxin and warfarin. Um, particularly, some, I know some places they ask about loading doses of them. So I'd probably have a bit of a look at those. And also gentamicin and vancomycin, which are sort of fairly hospital specific things that you wouldn't have come across. So they kind of be my big drugs. Um, I can leave that up for a bit if anyone needs to write it down. But, uh, and why do I think I got the job? Uh, firstly, my honours project was very much in line with the project that Prince of Wales Hospital had running at the time. I think that was pretty much a lot of it. Um, in that particular interview, I know I had a good approach to the clinical. Um, I was calm enough and had had enough practice that I could be quite systematic about it. Um, a lot of it comes down to personality fit. So either you know, you're fit with other interns that you're working with and the way the department works. It may just be that you're not the right person for that particular hospital. Practice, so practice in the interview, big part of it. And also luck. Um, you need to bear in mind that a lot of hospitals will have one, two positions and they'll get maybe 100 applicants. So even if you get an interview, you're doing really well. And final, does anyone have any questions? Yes. How many interviews did you have to do, Erin? I did seven. I know somebody who applied for every hospital in New South Wales. So there's another one. Um, she didn't get quite as far as doing her 17 interviews, but uh, half an hour after she got offered the position she got, she was about to move to tween heads. So, you know, basically, if you really want it, you, you've got to work for it and you've got to take it what you get kind of thing. You know, don't hold out for a hospital because you might not get it. And in the end, all hospitals are good. So. Okay. Okay, there's more questions. Oh, well, yeah.
if, I mean, even if it's something that is seemingly unrelated, you can usually work out a way to get it in there if it is actually relevant. Thanks for that, Erin. So if anyone else has any more questions, we'll have a bit of a Q&A session at the end, so you can hold on to your questions if you like. Um, so next up, we've got Sarah, who is an intern at the um, Children's Hospital of West Mead. If you'd like to put hands together for her. to the letter. It's helpful if you are a member of the SHPA to write that in because it looks like you're a little bit more interested in hospital rather than just you know any job at all. So that I think would help with your application letter. And also when you're addressing the selection criteria, make it easy to read. So in my letter I sort of put everything in bold. So the selection criteria, if that's in bold or in italics or something, if there are a hundred applications that the selectors have to go through, at least if you have the sort of questions and answers set out really easily, they don't have to worry about, oh, where am I going to find this? And, you know, you can make it all wordy and, and you know, really English-like, but they're looking for answers to the questions they're asking. So if you can make it easy to read, that's going to that's gonna act in your favour. Because after going through hundreds of applications, you can imagine it's quite hard to sort of find things that are not obvious. Um, and then in the interview, um, it's important that um, if you do get a counselling scenario, as in measuring a dose or, or getting getting props, use them and, and show that you're happy to sort of get your hands dirty and, and that sort of thing. Because if you can show that if I, you know, I had a syringe and the person had to have a dose of seven and a half mils, pull it out to seven and a half mils and, and show the pretend patient, you know, how you would how you would give the dose, and they know that you're you're into counselling the people and not just you know an item. Um, aside from that, if you, as Erin said, if you can practice, apply for apply for more than one hospital, but make sure that you do address it to the actual hospital that you're applying for, and then it doesn't look like you're just doing that to get practice, because um, it's important that if you are the intern for that hospital, that you're there because you want to be there, not because you know you had to be there, because um, hospitals are really whichever hospital you go to will be a really good place to be, and it's good if they know that you really want to be there. Any questions? <laughs> My letter would have been about um, a page long. Um, you can you can write too much and you can write too little, so it's important to sort of be succinct. So around a page, you'd say. We'll around about a page, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you, if you babble on, it's it's a, a lot to read. But if you don't say enough, you haven't exactly addressed the criteria. So about a page. Yep. Did you have a letter and the online application form? There were a few different hospitals that had both. Um, and some places prefer if you only submit one version. If you're going to submit it online or if you're going to post it, it's really good if you give them a call to make sure they got it. So with each hospital that you apply for, I would just submit it one way, but make sure that they've got it. Because a lot of the hospitals have um, you know, an advertisement to say that, yes, we've got this job available. And then you apply for it and you send it off. And then you get an email back later saying, can you apply online? So you sort of need to find out which system each place is using. A lot of it is online now, which is a lot easier for people to go through. But you just got to call, make sure they got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.